Welcome to TSAT. Today I am going to discuss a topic in uh, geography known as rocks. So here in the case of uh, rocks, rock is made up of a combination of minerals. Rocks are being formed by the solidification of lava and magma. So the difference between uh, lava and magma is both, uh, both the source for both lava and magma is uh, molten rock material. Because of high temperature and pressure conditions, rock uh, melts. So here, when the molten rock is in the earth, earth's interior, which is not being exposed to the uh, atmosphere, we call it as magma. When the magma erupts out and exposing out uh, uh, to the surface of the earth, we call it as lava. So, so this magma and lava, when the temperature decreases, solidifies to form rocks. So, uh, these uh, rocks which have been solidified because of lava and magma, because of the decrease in the temperature are known as igneous rock bodies. These igneous rock bodies or igneous rocks uh, are otherwise also known as uh, primary rocks or parent rocks. Because these are the rocks which have been formed initially during the formation of the earth and this, e this material or uh, the magma which has formed into uh, igneous rock bodies uh, resulted in the formation of other different variant types of rocks because of different processes uh, known as uh, sedimentary rocks and metamorphic rocks. So, based upon the formation, the rocks are being classified into three types. Igneous rock bodies, sedimentary rock bodies and metamorphic rock bodies. So, here in this case uh, of uh, different variant types of rocks are considered. The reason, the way they have been formed, for example, igneous rocks are being formed by the solidification of lava and magma. These are also known as parent rocks because the other rocks are formed from the igneous rock bodies. So, uh, in this case, uh, these igneous rock bodies, when they are being subjected to uh, certain processes of the earth, uh, they are being converted into sedimentary rocks and metamorphic uh, rocks. So, both the rocks being formed by the solidification of lava and magma together known as igneous rocks. In the case of sedimentary rocks, the name itself says that the rock is the resultant of sedimentation. So, here what happens is, uh, because of the process of weathering and erosion, what happens is, uh, the agents of weathering and erosion like, for example, the moving water, when it is moving from the higher elevated region, because of the kinetic energy the water has got uh, weathers the rock and erodes the rock. So, the difference between weathering and erosion is in the case of uh, weathering uh, means a larger rock particle becoming smaller particles is known as uh, weathering, a smaller sand or gravel is known as weathering. And these smaller particles which have been converted uh, from the rocks which are being carried to different parts, uh, is different regions is known as uh, erosional activity. In this process of erosional activity, these sand gravel material settle at the lowest place possible when the water is moving. In this process of sedimentation, a layer by layer rocks are being, these sand particles, the weathered particles are being settled down layer by layer which have been subjected to weathering and erosion. So, in this process what happens is compaction happens because of the pressure. Uh, because of the weight of the different layers which have been sedimented, because of the pressure being built because of gravity, the sand grains which have been settled in the process of sedimentation are being compressed uh, to form a single rock known as sedimentary rock. The cementing is being formed by the solutional activity of certain minerals like calcium etc. when they have been dissolved from the higher elevated rock regions. Uh, acts as a cement between the sand grains leading to the compaction of the sand grains leading to the formation of a single rock known as sedimentary rock. So, the next rock is the metamorphic rock. Metamorphosis means change. In this process what happens is the change here is because of uh, certain factors like temperature and pressure. So, here the change happened because of temperature is known as thermal metamorphosis. Whereas, the change in the rock uh, in terms uh, of uh, 
their color composition texture strength sometimes even the mineral composition varies uh, because of temperature is known as thermal metamorphism whereas in the case of uh, pressure is known as a dynamic metamorphism so there is a change happening in the nature of the rock in its color texture mineral composition strength etc because of temperature and pressure this change in these natures is known as a metamorphic rock so igneous rock is known as a parent rock material because igneous rock can be converted into a sedimentary rock and igneous rock can be converted into a metamorphic rock also so in the rock cycle uh, i will be explaining you how one rock converts into other at the end of uh, completing this uh, the concept of rocks so based upon the source the kind of minerals available based upon the kind of sedimentary mechanism temperature conditions pressure conditions even these three different variant types of rocks are been classified into different ways so different examples of igneous rock bodies has being projected to you so granite is an example of igneous rock body for example obsidian is an example of a, a igneous rock body scoria pumice are examples of igneous rock bodies so in the examination uh, they will be asking you different choices to identify different options being given to you or they may give you in the match the following to identify different variant types of these igneous rock bodies sedimentary rock bodies and metamorphic rock bodies which have been formed because of these uh, different uh, three different processes uh, with which uh, these rocks have been formed in the case of sedimentary rocks the limestone shale gypsum sandstones are the classic examples of sedimentary rocks in the case of metamorphic rocks the marble slate quartz and gneiss are the classic examples of uh, these different variant types of metamorphic rocks so fundamentally rocks are been classified into igneous sedimentary and metamorphic and these are the different variant types of these uh, basic three different variant fundamental types of uh, rocks so this variation is because of the way they have been formed in terms of the phenomena and even the mineral composition rock itself is an aggregation of minerals so these igneous rock bodies are been classified into two one is intrusive igneous rock bodies and the second is extrusive igneous rock bodies intrusive igneous rock bodies means now you have come to know that igneous rock bodies are been formed because of the solidification of uh, the magma so here these are known as intrusive because these rocks are been formed within the layers of the earth's interior without being exposed to the surface these are the classic examples of uh, igneous rock bodies so the pegmatite or uh, uh, diorite gabbar or some of the examples of uh, intrusive igneous rock bodies so even in while framing a question they may ask you out of these igneous rock bodies what are intrusive igneous rock bodies and what are the extrusive igneous rock bodies they may give you uh, a question based upon this to differentiate uh, uh, examples of different uh, intrusive and uh, extrusive uh, igneous rock bodies so th there are certain examples being given here so basalt is an example of ex extrusive igneous rock body pumice rhyolite tuff scoria are examples of extrusive uh, igneous rock body so here in this case uh, what happens is uh, the extrusive igneous rocks cool very fastly because uh, they are exposed to air whereas in the case of intrusive igneous rock bodies are not uh, uh, cooled very fast so because of this reason the crystal size varies when you relatively compare with intrusive igneous rock bodies and extrusive igneous rock bodies in the case of extrusive igneous rock bodies the crystal size is very small or sometimes the crystals are absent in the case of intrusive igneous rock uh, uh, the crystal size is, is more the more the time duration been consumed to solidify the larger the crystal size in the rock is so uh, these are certain points or the basis on which a questions can be framed so from magma the which is uh, uh, the source of formation of certain minerals so the different there might be a question to you what are the different kinds of minerals which are the which are available from uh, 
the source of magmatic rocks so these are the different kinds of metallic minerals like iron nickel copper lead zinc chromite manganese gold platinum and diamonds where a diamond is not a metal of course so uh, these are the different kinds of metallic minerals which are uh, available in uh, magmatic uh, rock and a question can be framed on this so in in the earth surface we have got 2000 different minerals are found in the earth out of these 2000 different variant types of minerals available uh, all the minerals are not evenly available here only 12 are common rock formers so out of these 2000 different kinds of minerals only 12 are common and out of these 12 87 of the earth minerals are silicates which are a combination of uh, silica so the on these three points even uh, questions can be framed so you need to keep this in mind that uh, uh, the number of different variant types of minerals uh, uh, available in the earth's crust but uh, very few minerals are responsible for the formation of rocks which are known as rock formers so here when we relatively compare with the rocks here as now as I have differentiated between sedimentary rocks, igneous rocks and metamorphic rocks, when the surface area on the top of the surface area of the earth is considered, the extent of area occupied in terms of area, 75% of the earth surface area is being covered by sedimentary rock. Only 25% uh, is, is covered by non-sedimentary rock. But when in a vertical dimension, when you are able to relatively uh, compare, only 5% of the rock matter when we go deep is made up of sedimentary rock. 95% of the rocks are made up of igneous and metamorphic rocks. Even a question can be framed uh, on this basis in terms of horizontal extent, in terms of vertical extent availability of these three different variant types of rocks. So you need to keep this in mind. So, uh, the composition of uh, out of these sedimentary rocks, the composition of these three, 8% in terms of uh, limestone, 12% in terms of uh, sandstone and 80% in terms of shale out of the different variant types of uh, sedimentary rocks. The examples of uh, extrusive igneous rocks, pumice, uh, basalt, rhyolite, already we have discussed this. Uh, so, intrusive igneous rocks, they have been, the way they have been formed, uh, magma, when it has been solidified very slowly because of which the crystal size is large, what I have discussed with you. So, uh, igneous rocks are formed both from magma and lava that you need to keep in mind because both magma and lava has got a source from a molten rock. So, in the case of this magma which is in the earth's interior because of high temperature and pressure because it is in a molten state tries to escape out uh, to expose itself to the outer layers through the fractures and faults available in the layers of the earth's interior. In this process what happens is uh, the temperature as it is decreasing when it is trying to emerge out uh, with the decrease in the depth uh, when we go in towards the earth's interior. The decreasing in the temperature and pressure leads to solidification of the rock sometimes uh, before the magma comes out of the earth's uh, uh, outermost layer. So, in this process, the magma intrudes into the spaces of the fracture zones and fault zones. In this process, the rocks are being formed uh, because of the cooling of magma which have been intruded into the spaces available in the layers of the earth's interior. So, the solidified rocks will acquire the shape of the fracture zones or the shape of the fractures which might be horizontal or which might be vertical or which might be slanting or any direction possible. So, based upon the uh, orientation of the solidified magma into these fracture zones, these solidified rocks from magma into these fracture zones are being classified into or named as. For example, if uh, 
For example, if a, a solidified rock is horizontal, we call it as a sill. If the solidified rock is in a vertical form, we call it as a, a dike. So, when it is horizontal, it is sill. When it is vertical, we call it as a dike. But the reason for the formation is uh, the solidified magma. So, when it is in the form of a dome shaped kind of thing, it is known as a lacolith. So, a larger structure which has been solidified with the help of magma is known as a batholith, which runs across some hundreds of kilometers sometimes. A small batholith is known as a stock. So, in the examination, he may ask you uh, in a different ways. These are all the structures which I have explained to you are intrusive igneous rock bodies. Or they may ask you the difference between a sill and a dike. Or they may ask you to differentiate between uh, a batholith and a stock. So, all these are solidified uh, rock bodies from magma. So, here in this case, when it is in a dome shaped, it is called as a lacolith. When it is a saucer, saucer shaped, it is known as a lapolith. So, they may ask you to, to differentiate between a lapolith and a lacolith. So, uh, these kind of structures are intrusive rock bodies. So, next is extrusive and intrusive igneous rock formations. One is outer the layer of the earth and which are in the internal layers of the earth. Uh, the different kinds of minerals uh, which are available here as I have discussed in the case of igneous rock bodies. But in the case of metamorphic rocks, uh, they may ask you what are the different kinds of uh, minerals available in metamorphic rocks. So, they include anthracite, quartz, marble. Uh, slate, granulite, gneiss, and cyst. So, here in the case of this metamorphic, anthracite uh, is considered as the purest form of coal. So, when uh, the coal is being subjected to metamorphosis, it is being converted into anthracite. So, this can be asked as a, an objective bit. This already been discussed. The metallic ores derived from igneous rock bodies can be an objective bit. So, these are ex examples of uh, metamorphic rocks. Nisius, slate, marble, phyllite, cyst. So, quartzite, these are some examples of metamorphic rocks which can be asked in uh, the exam. So, in this case of metamorphic process, what happens is with the increase of metamorphosism, for example, uh, with the increasing in the depth, what I have already mentioned to you is, there is increase in the temperature, there is increase in the pressure. So, because of these two factors of uh, increasing in the temperature and pressure conditions, what happens is, the nature of the rock varies in terms of the strength and nature, because of which uh, one rock will be converted into a different type of rock. So, a shale uh, is converted into slate, slate into phyllite, phyllite into cyst, cyst into gneiss. So, this is the sequence of formation of uh, rocks. Uh, once shale is uh, a sedimentary rock, shale is a sedimentary rock. When a shale is being subjected to metamorphosis of different uh, temperature and pressure conditions, it gradually converts into different uh, variant types of metamorphic rocks. The sequence can be asked as a question. Slate into phyllite, phyllite into cyst, cyst into gneiss. A question can be asked on the sequence of metamorphosism. See here. So, because of metamorphic process, the, sed the sedimentary rock, an example of sedimentary rock is sandstone. St sandstone, when metamorphosized, convert into quartz is an example. So, the other uh, metamorphosism is known as contact metamorphosism. So, the uh, Magma which is present in the earth's interior, when it is in touch with the nearby layers, is being subjected to metamorphosism. So, because the heat magma which is which is impacting the temperature to the above layers, subjecting to metamorphosism because of contact is known as contact metamorphosism. So, dynamic and thermal metamorphosis which I have already mentioned because of dynamic metamorphosis is because of uh, the pressure variations when the rock is changing its form and minerals. Thermal metamorphosism is uh, because of the temperature. So, in this process, granite turns into gneiss, clay and shale to cyst. 
the next is sedimentary rocks so in the case of sedimentary rocks are formed because of the process of sedimentation because of the process of weathering and erosion so the weathering and erosion of rocks are because of mechanical factors and because of chemical factors so mechanical factor is because of just sheer mechanical energy the larger rock particles become smaller rock particles for example the moving water from the higher elevated regions to the lower regions from the mountains what happens is the water has got a kinetic energy this kinetic energy makes the rocks to crack subject to weathering and erosional activity so there is no chemical change or there is no change in the composition of the mineral of the rock there is just a larger particle becoming a smaller particle so this is known as a mechanical weathering so uh, sedimentary rocks so sandstone these are all shale or classic example which are the resultant of mechanical weathering whereas in the case in the case of chemical weathering what happens is uh, there is a change in the chemical process because of the rocks being reacting with uh, carbon dioxide oxygen etc in this process the chemical composition uh, of the sedimentary materials vary so iron ore is been formed because of reacting with uh, oxygen etc flint uh, dolomite and some limestones are classic examples of uh, uh, rocks which are been formed because of chemical weathering so they may ask you uh, here in this case to uh, in framing questions in terms of uh, uh, to differentiate different types of rocks which are been formed because of uh, uh, mechanical weathering and chemical weathering these are different variant types of sedimentary rocks formed because of mechanical and chemical weathering coal and limestone are sedimentary rocks of organic origin so why these have these two stones have been classified as an organic rocks because these two stones or coal for example which has been used as a fuel um, which has been converted into anthracite graphite because of uh, the metamorphic process uh, because they have got source from living organisms that is the reason why for example coal is been formed from plants for example limestone is been formed sometimes the calcium because of solutional activity from the shells of mollusks uh, when it is when the calcium is being dissolved for, for cementing the sand grains uh, because they have got uh, uh, animal origin or living organisms origin that is the reason why they have been classified as organic rocks and other significant factor which can be asked as a question is uh, fossils are found only in a variant of rock known as sedimentary rocks only in other variant types of rocks fossils are not found the reason behind it is in the process of sedimentation what happens is a layer by layer when they are being sedimented here because of the process of weathering and erosion what happens is these living organisms the whether the fish or the plant or or the, or the algae whether it can be in the indogangetic plain the sedimentation happening from the himalayas or in the case of an ocean when the river is flowing what happens is a layer by layer when they are been sedimented when these plants and animals die they are been buried under the layers of the rock subjecting the pressure and temperature in the absence of oxygen because of high temperature and pressure these living organisms are responsible for conversion into fossil fuels over millions of years the petroleum is one such a uh, liquid fuel Uh, which is been derived from these living organisms which are been trapped in the process of uh, sedimentation because of temperature and pressure so fossils are found only in sedimentary rocks whether it is coal whether it is petroleum uh, these two are present and in any fossils of animals and plants uh, where archaeologists excavate uh, are found only in the sedimentary layers so these are the basic features of the sedimentary rocks uh, which have got different layers because they are been deposited and cemented cracks fossils are found and concretion means cemented because of uh, the pressure that is the reason why uh, these sedimentary rocks have got all these kind of characteristic features so the minerals which are been derived from the sedimentary rocks contain minerals like feldspar gypsum iron oxide dolomite quartz and carbonates so uh, 
these are the different kinds of minerals derived from sedimentary rocks so friends so i have specified that the minerals which are being derived from the igneous rock bodies the minerals which are being derived from metamorphic rock bodies and the minerals which are being derived from sedimentary rock bodies so questions can be from the oh, the source of mineral and the type of rock match the following into any types can be formed so you need to learn the way to form a or frame a question by observing the previous papers with the content being given to you rock cycle so here in the case of this uh, rock cycle so here uh, in the case of this uh, uh, rock cycle what we need to understand is one form of rock is being converted into another form of rock uh, through this process uh, which i have explained to you for example when an igneous rock is been subjected to weathering and erosion uh, what happens is it it is subjected to sedimentation and because of the sedimentation and cementation and pressure uh, it leads to formation of sedimentary rock so when the sedimentary rock is because of magmatic activity when it is been uh, melted it can be converted into igneous rock body so there is possibility of conversion of uh, one rock into another rock in the same way when the igneous rock body is been subjected to a uh, dynamic metamorphism or thermal metamorphism this igneous rock body can be metamorphosized into a metamorphic rock uh, and a metamorphic rock when melts can be converted into an igneous rock body metamorphic rock when subjected to weathering and erosion can be formed into a sedimentary rock when sedimentary rock is been subjected to metamorphism of thermal metamorphism or dynamic metamorphism a sedimentary rock can can convert in, into a metamorphic rock so friends this is about rocks and i will be discussing with uh, uh, groundwater and karst topography in the next episode